Okay. Now, I will go to the domains and let us focus on both instruction and assessment. Okay. So, let's look at phonological awareness. Phonological awareness refers to the understanding of different ways that... What's the next word? Oral language. Take note, very important, the ways by which oral language can be divided into smaller segments and manipulated. So when we talk about phonological awareness, we're not talking about written. You get it? That is the main difference. Okay, we are talking about oral language. I am trying to highlight important things and concepts that I know are most often misunderstood by teachers. You get it? Um, in fact, phono um, not necessarily phonological awareness as a whole, but phonemic awareness, which I will then discuss in the next slides, I call phonemic awareness in my experience as a teacher and as a trainer the missing link. It's, I believe, the one of the big gaps in learning to read, and uh, we will find out later why. So when we talk about phonological awareness, your teachers, our teachers are doing this. We have rhyme detection. That's why we have a lot of nursery songs and rhymes. That's part of phonological awareness. It's being aware of the way words sound and whether they are similar. They have similar ending or not. Like this example, okay? If you are reciting rhymes, what words rhyme? Then you say the words. You don't necessarily, you don't make them read. Okay? No reading here. You get it? No reading in phonological awareness. Okay? We can also make them, or we need to give them rather, opportunities to manipulate syllables. Like blending and splitting syllables. Example. How many syllables? Can you please clap the syllables in Roberto? But as you clap it, I want you to say, to say the, the syllable. Ro Caterpillar. Okay, very good. Now, why are we asking our students to clap? Because they need something tangible. They cannot, when you say, how many syllables does a caterpillar have? They cannot just say four. You get it? They have to experience it. Okay, in fact, when, um, for some of my students, uh, they even need counters. Because clapping, after you clap, you don't see anything anymore, right? It's gone. Tama? Some of my students, I would need to give them counters. For example, Roberto. Pagkapasabi po niya ng ro, kukuha siya ng isang popsicle stick, lalagay niya ro, ber, to. Para pagkatapos, nakikita niya tatlo. Nakuha nyo? Because some children are not, cannot follow that through auditory means only. They need something visual, something tangible that they can see. And if you're talking about kindergarten and grade one, they are at that level. You have, we, uh, the resource speakers the past days have discussed with you their characteristics, correct? And if you have children, you know how concrete they are. So, for not all of my students in kinder or grade one, but for some, I would really need to give them counters. Okay, so that would be manipulating syllables. Take note, we started with words, now syllables, then we go to words. We now go to phonemic awareness. And what is phonemic awareness? Uh, are you all familiar with phonemic awareness? I think you have heard this somehow. You have attended so many trainings and you have trained. Okay, so maybe for many of you, this is a review. Phonemic awareness is ability, the ability to notice, think about, and work with individual sounds or phonemes in spoken words. Again, I want to highlight... Ano po? Are we going to show them the words? No. No. No words. Phoneme. So our main guide for phonemic aware awareness is the term phoneme, the root word of phonemic. 
Okay? Phoneme. What is a phoneme? The smallest unit of a, of a sound, of a word, which is the sound. The smallest unit, rather, the smallest unit of sound. That is a phoneme. Okay? We need to provide a lot of opportunities here. Take note that we are just in phonological awareness. We are not yet in word recognition. Please take note because this is the getting ready to decode. You get it? So even before they blend the words, the phonics, the letters that we show, we need to do this. So what are some of the activities that we can do? What do we teach them? Isolation. Okay, phon phoneme isolation, recognizing individual sounds in words. Example. What is the first sound in sun? Okay, you can show the picture of a sun. Correct? Will you show the picture of the word sun? Papakita ko ba yung S-U-N? No. No. Kasi nga, spoken. Spoken word. Hindi ba? Okay. So, it can also be, remember we are in isolation, so we have lessons on what is the last sound in drum. Um, most often when I do instruction, take note, this is already an exercise. All the activities I'll show you will have to follow the explicit instruction steps. So what does it mean? If this is my lesson for today, I need to present this lesson, correct? So how do I present this lesson? I will have to give examples. I will not ask what. I will tell. You get it? For example, listen very well. Okay, class, look at this picture. Look at my invisible picture of a sun. Okay. <laughs> this is a sun. The first sound I hear in sun is, I over-exaggerate the first few times. This is a sun. The first sound I hear in this picture or in this word is sun. Okay, then I will get another picture. Moon. The first sound I hear in moon is moon. Mm. I am teacher Nong. The first sound I hear in my name Nong is N. Mm. So what am I doing? It's teacher presentation. The first part, presentation. And then I will now have to go to modeling. So I have another picture. The Look at this pen. Look at the picture of the pen. Pen. Okay. The first sound I hear is and then, I'm sure that after maybe the tenth word, they will do it with me, more or less. Although, I know if I do it in kinder, I have some kids also who, when I say, milk, say, P, P, teacher, P, P. Ah, okay. So, what will we do? So, I will use the P of the child and look again at my picture. What is it again? Milk. Look. P pilk. Is it pilk? So they, they would really experience rather than just saying, no, you're wrong. What's the correct? Oh, who can help him? Give the correct answer. Okay. And remember, we are still in modeling. I will not yet ask. You get it? Now, I will now go to what's the third part? Guided. Okay. Guided practice. Okay. Ah... Uh, Telephone, telephone. Everybody, let's do it together. Let's give together the first sound you will hear in the words that I will say with the pictures. Everybody, telephone. telephone. What's the first sound that you hear? Very good. Um, mother. mother. Okay, you say first the word or the picture. Name the picture, then give the first sound of the word. Mother. Together? Mother. Very good. Siyempre, pag ganito, sigurado ko kung unang araw ko to may mga mali-mali pa. Tama? Hindi pa lahat yan tama. So, I will proceed in that manner, maybe for a number of pictures or spoken words. 
And then, let's try it, okay? Uh, let's say I have 50 students, right? They have like 50 students. Yeah. Okay. And they are in lines, correct? Line one, correct? Yeah. Line one, line two, or maybe you have groups. Let us say that this is, to, to just make it very quick, you are left to right. Sa, sa perspective ko na, line, uh, group one, okay, lahat kayo group one po, ah. Group two, ay tatlo na lang. Group one, group two, at yung nandun sa dulo na sana nakikinig pa rin sa akin. Okay. Group three. Anong group po kayo? Ito? Ito? Okay. I, when, I, when I say the word and show you the picture, say the word. There are two things you have to say. The picture and the first sound that you hear. Okay, are you ready? Okay. Sunod-sunod ah. One, two, three. Bag. Okay, very good. Ball pen. Ball pen. Okay. Pencil. Pencil. Okay, fast forward. Let's say I have done that a number of times. Okay, fast forward now. So, I will now do by lines. Next. Okay, now if you know the answer, I want you to raise your hand. Okay, let's look at this. Microphone. Yes, very good for raising your hand. Come here. Very good. Very good. Okay, leave your bag. Come here. Okay. Microphone. You are going to answer two things. Remember, give me the word and then say the beginning sound that you hear. Mm, microphone. Can you give the mm. word first? Microphone. Siya lang po tinawag ko. Huwag muna kayo magsalita. Tapos na yung by group at by class. Microphone. Hmm. Is she correct? Okay, let's give her a big, big clap. Okay, now, wait. Uh, ngayon siya naman, okay, I want you to get a picture here, show it to your classmate, then you will call your classmate. Okay? This is the picture. Pale. Jen. Aba, nagtaas daw si Jen. O, Jen. <laughs> Dali, Jen. O, dito na lang. Pale. P okay, now, thank you very much for all the volunteers. Okay, now, what have you noticed? How did I scaffold it? First? Group. Before the group? Then? Then? And then? Oh, di ba independent na siya? Tama? Okay. So, pero po, sir, ano po? Pero? Again, again, sir, you have, can we have it? Ah, yes, yes. Especially, sir, especially if I think that she cannot answer. But sometimes what I would do, it depends. That's why you always use your best judgment as a teacher. You know your students better. If I notice that the, the person or the student I called cannot answer, then the next one cannot answer, that is telling me something. I go back to scaffolded, more scaffolded because I'm doing independent already. You get it? That is why our lesson plan is a plan. It's just a plan. The teacher should adjust. Because if at any instance, and it always happens, all of you were teachers once upon a time. Correct? You all know that in the, you troubleshoot. Hindi mo susundin ang lesson plan mo. Eh, nakalagay na doon. Gagawin ko na ito. Magsisit work ako. Eh, hindi pa nakukuha. Alam ko, masasayang ang sit work ko. I will try to, in other words, what I am doing? I am doing assessment during teaching. Correct? I am doing monitoring assessment. As I teach, I try to figure out, I know I can hear, I can hear how many are wrong and how many are correct. And that is why the advantage also of scaffolded instruction in that form would be the students will not be embarrassed if they do not know the answer. Because you are all answering in unison. Correct? So okay lang magkamali. Basta sumasagot ako at sinusubukan ko. 
I remember also that that is, was my problem in when I was a student because I'm not good in speaking English. We don't speak English at home. And uh, we had the rule that we are not supposed to speak in Filipino in school. Okay? And uh, there are sanctions if we do. So, my problem is I always make mistakes. And when the teacher asks, and during that time, it's always independent. Okay? It's always independent. So when the teacher calls me and I give a wrong answer, I get so embarrassed. However, if I give them opportunities to answer first together, practice, 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 even if you make a mistake, you will adjust because you hear your classmate beside you saying another answer and the teacher says that's the correct answer. So will you, you will try to adjust. Okay, that is just one example of scaffolded instruction. Take note, hindi lang po yung paraan. Maraming paraan. Basta dapat may gabay. Okay, marami po, marami pong um, pagtuturo na ginagamit yung pinakita ko na alam nyo na naman na explicit teaching, ang parati pong hindi nabibigyan ng pansin ay yun guided practice. Dahil ang nakikita namin na nakalaman sa guided practice ay sit work on the board. Yun na nga, ganun din ang practice ng teacher ko. Number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let us check the answers. Is the answer correct? Number 1, correct. look at your answer in your notebook. Mm, this is the correct answer. Oh, who can help her? The answer is wrong. Paano naman naging scaffolded yun? Nakita nyo kung bakit siya hindi ginabayan. Hindi talaga siya ginabayan. Um, in fact, um, when we check lesson plans, in, uh, uh, when we mentor our students, uh, we would always make sure that they do scaffold during that guided practice. Because many lesson plans that we see are really activities only. Period. Activities wherein this uh, guided practice is not evident. So, Please monitor that part when you are in the field because that is very, very important. Kaya nga po sinasabi ko minsan doon sa anak ko, doon sa mga anak ko, uh, or in fact, nung malalaki na yung anak ko, yung mga intermediate na sila dati, sila yung nagsasabi, alam mo, mami, teacher namin hindi nagtuturo. Ko, ha? Laki ng bayad mo, anak. Hindi ka tinuturoan. Sabi ko, can you explain? Eh, dahil guru nga ako, ma, 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 ano, ako magtanong, can you please explain niya? Ano, nagsulat lang doon sa blackboard, tapos nagsasalita, minsan kaharap pa yung blackboard, tapos pinasagot na sa amin yung libro. Sabi ko, oo nga anak, hindi niya kayo tinuturuan. Because for me, the teacher just, just in, in part one, what's the per, part one of the lesson? Presentation, introduction, in nag-introduce ang teacher, nagturo, tapos, independent activity. Ni hindi nag-model, ni hindi nag-guided practice. Sa ikaw, tama ka, anak. Okay, buti na lang naintindihan mo. Okay, kundi ituturo ko sa'yo. Okay, you get it? So, take note, I, uh, those are the four parts, so whatever we are talking about here would follow those steps. Okay? Because I will not be, I, with the time frame that we are given, I will not be able to uh, model to you in every component of phonological awareness how to do the explicit instruction. So keep that in mind. Another, identity, phoneme identity. So what are activities can you give here? What's the common sound in different words? Example, look at the pictures, bag, bird, a uh, bed, bird, box. Okay, now, ah, I'm sorry. What are the same in these words? Again, will you show the words? No words. What are the same in these words? Madalas po, pag yan ang tanong ko, walang sumasagot sa unang tanong ko. Ngayon, ulitin ko. I have to present again. Look at the four words. For the lesson, bag, bed, bird, box. What is the same in these words? Ah, bag. Then again, I will overemphasize. I will think aloud as I present. Then I will say, there's something similar among these words. And I think it's... B, b. Then I will emphasize, I think it's the first sound. Okay, whether that is in English or mother tongue, you get it? 
because we are talking about three languages. The examples are in English though. Again, we go through that part. Ito po yung mga tanong para na to sa uh, guided practice na to. You get it? You still have to do explicit instruction. And how about these words? Hop, step, map, lip. Final sound. Final sound. Take note also that the initial sound is easier to identify if they are similar than the final sound. You get it? So the first lessons were for this uh, identity would be this one. Okay, the first before the final. And then we also have cate categorization. It is recognizing the word with the odd sound in a sequence of three or four words. Okay, look at this example. Matt, men, big mop. Okay, so what does not belong? Of course, you know the answer, kasi po lahat tayo ay nagbabasa na. But do you recognize something? Among those of you who have taught uh, grade 1, kinder, yung nagbabasa po, among those who have taught beginning readers, di ba marami sa inyo nagturo? Tama po ba ako? O yung anak nyo, tinuruan nyo. Anong napapansin nyo sa classroom? Di ba ginagawa natin to kaya lang may kasamang salita? Di ba? Ginagawa natin to eh. Kaya lang kasabay ang salita. Kaya hindi siya phonemic awareness. You get it? Dapat po, wala munang salita. Okay? Then, um, we have also blending. As the term suggests, they now put together different sounds. For example, oh, sige mga bata, meron ako mga salitang, mga tunog na naiisip. Ah, hmm, Ah, ano kaya pagsamasamahin natin? Tingnan nyo, ah, pagsamasamahin ko. Kasi presentation, di ba? Ako muna, ama, 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 ama. Meron akong ama. At ang ama ay may kasamang i... Teka muna, ang fast nyo naman eh. Nagpe-present pa lang ako eh. <laughs> Para naman kay hindi kinder eh. <laughs> okay. Very good. Ibig sabihin, hindi ko natutuloy kasi nakuha nyo na. Pero nakuha nyo po. So, maglalaro lang ako ng tunog. Papagsama-samahin. Sino muna? Kasi di ba pinapag... We ask them to blend on their own. Put together. Or maybe we give an example. But here, we, the, we present, we show, we model. That's the first two parts. I will again repeat. We will have to show them first. Okay, uh, there was one book uh, that showed very simply how, how the explicit teaching is done. First, okay, ganito po, yung, it, it, it uh, enumerates, for example, I do, you watch. Okay, what part of the lesson plan is that? I do, you watch. Okay, I do, you join. Hindi mo na. Modeling pa rin. Okay. Uh, kasi join pa lang eh. Join. You do, I help. You do, I watch. Okay. Diba? Napakasimple niya. Pero pinapakita niya ang ating, ang dapat gawin ng isang guro sa isang silid. There, are, there is gradual release of responsibility. Again, I am highlighting this. So, uh, this is an English example. I'll skip this. I'll give you an example already. Ama at ina. We also have segmentation. Blending, putting together. Now we make them uh, break down. Okay, example. How many sounds do you hear in bell? Everybody, let's do it. You can clap. Can you say, okay, okay, I will present first class. <laughs> Kasi alam ko, hindi na kay kinder, kaya nandun na ako sa independent. Okay, bell. B, E, U. Okay? Together. B, E, U. Tama? Okay, bell. Okay, now, uh, how about in sheep? Okay, how many? Show with your fingers. I want your fingers, everyone. Okay. Very good. You have different answers. 
It means, as a good teacher, I have to go back. Model. Correct? Model. I should not go to my next slide. I will clarify. Okay. Remember, sounds that you hear. Hear. Okay. Shh. Eat. Tama? Yes. Dahil, yung iba pong sumagot ng apat. Kasi ginawa nyo ba dalawa yung I? Okay. Pag ganun, kasi ganito. Sheep. So, pagbasa ko, sheep. Tama? At yung iba naman na nagsagot ng lima. Okay lang ma magkamali. Pero pag nagkamali kayo sa last day, lagot kayo. <laughs> ngayon, okay. Kasi formative tayo ngayon, di ba? Formative. <laughs> Okay. Sheep. Okay, yung ibang mga, when I do this with uh, teachers, when I do training, iba sabi na, teacher no. S, I, I, I. Okay, sabi ko, o oh, sige, basahin ko yung sinabi mo ha. Si heap. There is a si heap on the hill. There is a si heap. Kasi ganun daw basahin, but what you hear. You get it? So, let us now try check together. Ilan? Show with your fingers. Formative pa to. Pwede magkamali. Okay. Very good. You are fast learners. Okay. Check. Check. Okay. You get it? So, those are phonemes. May I remind you, please, do not ask your students how many phonemes do you hear. Okay? That technical term is for us, teachers. And actually, there are many technical terms that we make them understand that are not necessary for reading. Like diphthongs, digraphs. Kailangan ba nilang malaman yon? Maybe for some, you may have different answers. But if our objective is for them to comprehend, do they need to know and define diphthongs and digraphs? I believe they don't have to do that. Dahil Pag uwi ko sa linggo at kinausap ko yung anak ko, okay? Pag kinausap ko yung anak ko, yung, yung anak ko po yung nagtatrabaho na, okay? At kanina nagpapaalam siya bago ako umalis na hihiramin niya raw ang kotse, okay? So pag tinanong ko siya sa linggo, anak, anong oras ka umuwi? Okay, di sasagot siya. Tapos sabihin ko, yung listahan na binigay kong bibilhin mo, binili mo ba? Kunin mo nga yung listahan, check mo, sabihin mo sa akin ano-ano yung binili mo. At sasag, kunin niya yung listahan, di ba? Basahin niya sa akin sa linggo. Tapos sabihin ko, anak, titingnan ko kung naintindihan niya, alin dyan sa binasa mo ang digraph, ang diphthong, at ang may blends. Para malaman kung naintindihan mo ang bilin ko. Okay. So, eh, nagawa niya, mahaba yung listahan na iniwan ko eh. Kasi nga, gagamit siyang kotse. <laughs> okay? May kapalit. So, gag mahaba ang listahan kung gagawin niya, para malaman ko kung naintindihan niya yung sinulat ko, kailangan bang alam niya ang definition ng diphthong by grap blends? Di ba, hindi? Basta nagawa niya yun, ibig sabihin, naintindihan niya. You get it? So, what is our ultimate objective? Dapat lang po maliwanag sa ating guro, ano ang layunin ko sa leksyon na to? para ba magbigay ng kahulugan ng bawat technical term na dapat pang teacher? O gusto ko makabasa siya ng may pangunawa? Okay, alin ba talaga? Okay? So, please think about that. Again, please do not ask your kinder, your grade 1, even your grade 2 or 3 phonemes. Children, tell me the number of phonemes. Sounds, that would be fine. Okay, next. Now, we will manipulate or substitute sounds this time. Okay. Listen. Smile. Everybody smile. Ah, there. Very good. Everybody frown. Everybody smile. Smile. What will happen to smile if remove, we take away or remove the s at the beginning? Smile. Very good. Okay, so we are already, that example is already manipulating. We are, subs, uh, we are removing. Okay, because when you manipulate, you can add, you can remove. Okay, so, 
there. That is just what we did. Again, let me just repeat because you might think that the examples here would be the lesson. How will you teach this? Following what? The? Kala ko ako yung gutom. Di ba pinagmerienda nila kayo? How will we teach this? What is the lesson plan? Explicit. Kasi mukha pong simple, di ba? Pero po, gagamitin pa rin natin ang diretsyong pagtuturo na ginagamitan ng iba't ibang bahagi. There's also, what is pot with an S at the beginning? Okay, dahil pag hindi nyo naman nasagot yan, magagalit ako sa inyo. Dapat hindi kayo nandito. Okay? Pero sa bata po, sobrang hirap yan. Lalo pag hindi tayo sumunod sa presentation, introduction, modeling, guided practice, mahirap yan. Pero, sa karanasan po namin at sa pagtuturo namin, basta sinunod yon matututo sila. Explicit teaching. Ah, okay. So, with that, those are the phonemic awareness activities. Before I go to the next domain, let me just highlight. Okay. Phonemic awareness, we are just focusing on sounds, oral. Okay. Uh, and I realized, I, that's why I call this the missing link, or I call this the gap, why our students, our beginning readers are having a hard time blend. I call this the gap because I also had that same experience. I will show them, for example, van. Mataba, may laman. Okay, van. Okay, there's a picture of a van. 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 Okay. V-an. Van. Okay. Ang pinapakita ko kasi salita. V-A-N. At paulit-ulit, sa simula, talaga po ang hirap. Tama? Ang hirap ng blending. Pero naisip nyo ba kung paglalaroan na natin ang tunog? Sa simula pa lang, pagsasamasamahin natin ang tunog na walang mga simbolo. Kung gano'n na kabilis kapag may simbolo. Hindi ba? Kasi napaglaruan na natin. At ang madalas ko pong ginagamit dito ay mga pangalan nila. Kasi, siyempre, pangalan mo yon Halimbawa, pagkatapos ko na ng isang buong leksyon, ginagamisan ko na explicit instruction. Ito'y activity na. A, N, A. Pagsamasamahin natin. So, pag gagamitin natin ang mga bagay sa paligid, again, what, where they are, use their names. Huwag naman po yung Margarita. Okay. Let us put together Margarita. Okay. Please use shorter, uh, fewer sounds to put together. O kaya baka naman, okay, blend. Tapos ang salita nyo, super cuff, logistic, exfial, shoes. Okay. You get it? Play around with words that they know. Okay.